Hi, I'm Father Jonathan Meyer from All Saints Parish, and Jesus is alive, and the faith is called to be alive in your home. Thanks for joining me this week as we get ready for this upcoming weekend, which for us is the celebration of the solemnity of the Ascension. The solemnity of the Ascension is such a powerful mystery, and we're going to begin by delving into our gospel passage, which is this year from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, up to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and baptize all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, this Gospel passage takes place at Jesus' ascension. So let's just talk about Jesus' ascension just for a moment. So Jesus dies on Good Friday. Three days later, the tomb is found empty. Then, for 40 days, Jesus appears multiple times to the apostles and to the disciples. Jesus, during these 40 days, encourages gives guidance. He actually institutes sacraments, the sacrament of, of confession as he breathes upon them. It, it's really amazing to think about Jesus' ministry during those 40 days. He was with them in a resurrected body. He still had the flesh wounds. We know at least in his, in his hands and in his side, but maybe even more. The amount of people that came to faith during this time period. And at the culmination of it, Jesus ascends on his own up into heaven, up into glory. For those of you who pray the rosary faithfully, you know that this mystery is the second mystery. And then what do we believe about Jesus? Well, we believe that he ascended, and as we re recite in our creed, that he now sits at the Father's right hand to judge the living and the dead. That Jesus goes up into heaven, our mortal nature, our physical nature, is taken up into the heart of the Trinity. Jesus, in the incarnation, when he came down from heaven in the womb, and then entered into the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, becoming one with humanity, suffers, dies, rises, and goes, but now our humanity enters into glory. This is hope for every single one of us. We see its continued completion in Mary's assumption. We don't celebrate the assumption this weekend, but the assumption is the fact, the proof that other human beings, not just God, but Mary, a human being, like you and like I, that we will rise again on the last day and that we will be in heaven with our bodies, our physical nature, at the coming of Christ at the end of time, our bodies will ultimately gloriously rise from the grave. The ascension is a beautiful mystery. And Jesus leaves so that the novena, nine days, can begin and then the Holy Spirit comes down. We live now, of course, in this age of the Spirit. In this gospel passage, Jesus says some pretty powerful words. First of all, he commissions us to go out, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations. So let me ask you a question. Have you fulfilled that commandment? How many disciples have you made? How many people have you led to Jesus Christ? How many people have you led to the waters of baptism? How many people have you told Jesus about this past week, this past month, this past year? Are we fulfilling the command that Jesus gives us? Second, Jesus says this, Behold, I am with you always. I am with you always. Do we believe that? 
Do we believe with all our hearts and all our minds and all our souls that Jesus is with us always? And we know that Jesus is with us in the most blessed sacrament. Even if your church is locked right now, you can drive to your church and you can sit in the parking lot. And beside, through the brick wall and then ultimately through the veil in front of the tabernacle and through the gold door of the tabernacle, Jesus is there. The Eucharist is one of the most powerful ways that Jesus says, Behold, I am with you always. And for those of you, and I know that many of you are, that are genuinely suffering because you can't receive Jesus, Jesus sees that with tremendous love. And Jesus loves you. Don't ever forget that. This week, as we get ready for the Feast of the Ascension, I want us to reflect upon our questions. Uh, this week, uh, we're encouraging you to wear blue and white to Mass as a reminder of Jesus going up into the heavens. The blue of the sky, or blue is often just a symbol of heaven, and then white being the symbol of the clouds that he was taken up on. So these are the questions for this weekend's Gospel. What's the basic story or context? What did, you, what did you just hear proclaimed? What's the good news? Why is this a good story? Where is the salvation in this story? Why are there only 11 disciples at Jesus' ascension? Hmm. What is the commission, the command that Jesus gives us in this passage? Is that command being lived out? Is it being lived out in your parish? Is it being lived out in your family? Is it being lived out in your marriage? What is it that Jesus teaches us? Part of the command is, has to do with what Jesus taught us. So what did Jesus teach us? How would you summarize it? If someone came up to you and said, what are the teachings of Jesus? How would you answer that question? Who have you shared the faith with? And who should you share the faith with? Jesus clearly says, Behold, I am with you always. How is Jesus with us always? And then, how is Jesus' presence in the Most Blessed Sacrament, in the Eucharist, a fulfillment of this promise? Take some time this week by yourself, with others, in a small group, with your spouse, with your family, to go over these questions. Do it before Mass on Sunday. And when you watch Mass, when you are at Mass, with the Good Lord, all the more, feel the power of that Mass. Know the glory of that Mass. The Ascension is a gift. It's a gift to the whole Church. Because in the Ascension, all of us are called to set our eyes on our end goal, which is the glory of heaven. Let's pray that this week we'll keep our eyes focused on heaven. And may we all meet in the glory and the mystery of the Eucharist. May you keep your faith alive, for He is alive, and the faith is alive in your homes. Visit us at allsaintscatholic.net allsaintscatholic.net for resources on how to keep the faith alive in your home. Amen.